This is Anthony Morganti. Welcome to my podcast for the joy of photography. Thanks for tuning into this week's podcast. Today I'm going to talk about some websites, some magazines, some professional organizations, and a book that I think might help you with your photography. I'm going to start out talking about stuff that would help a beginner. Then I'll go through to some stuff that's more specialized, maybe fine art photographer or black and white photographer. I'll talk about some professional organizations, and I'm even going to mention a book. Now, let me say at the top that I have no affiliations with any of the companies or websites or anything I'm going to talk about today. Uh, recently, I received an email from a guy, and he said that he was kind of tired of hearing me always talk about whether, whether or not I have an affiliation with the company or not. I think it's important that I let you know whether or not I'm affiliated with somebody or if I'm being paid to do something. Uh, I didn't really realize the influence. I have until I started getting a very large following. And I think maybe when my YouTube followers became around of a quarter of a million, I started getting offers from companies uh, asking me to promote their product and they would pay me to do so. I just never thought that was cool. Uh, if I'm not actually using a product myself and I feel so like enthused by the product that I want to let you know about it. I don't think it's cool to just do it because I'm getting paid. So I decided to never accept any paid promotion. So I just don't do it. Um, and what I do do and I talk about is I am an affiliate for some companies. For companies that I really believe in and I really do use their product, I will become an affiliate like anyone else can. And if you use my link to purchase the product, I would make a commission. So that's what I do. And that's the way I feel is the right way to do it. And I feel obligated to mention it all the time because not everyone has been watching my videos for several years. Some people just watch it for the first time and they really have to understand where I'm coming from. So you know whether or not, uh, I think all teachers of anything on YouTube should do this. I really don't like it when a YouTube teacher is hawking a product like it's the best thing in the world and they're only doing it because they're getting paid. So that's why I do it the way I do it. So bear with me when I mention it. And that's it for this long dissertation on the subject. Now, again, we're going to talk about things that I think will help you with your photography. And we're going to start out for beginners. And you could see the first website we're looking at is digitalphotographyschool.com. This is probably the most common website um, out there for photography how-to articles and a video here and there. If you Google, you know, learn photography, this is probably the first thing that's going to pop up. This website last I looked was the busiest website traffic-wise as far as photography how-to websites go. That's because they have hundreds, if not thousands of articles on everything concerning photography. If you're a landscape photographer, a black and white photographer, uh, any type of photography, studio photography, if you just want to learn about post-processing, I guarantee that they'll have an article at Digital Photography School that should help you. And by the way, all, everything I'm going to talk about today, I'll have links in the show notes so you could find this stuff uh, pretty easily. So if you're a beginner, go to Digital Photography School. There's a dash between the three words, Digital Photography School, so two dashes, dot com. Go there, check it out. Um, as you can see, it's laid out fairly easily. Uh, you got photography tips and tutorials, and as you go down, there's a post-production section, um, more, there's cameras and equipment, and so on. They also have a search feature up here, and they have more categories up along the top. So beginner, I'd start here. Another website you may want to look at if you're a beginner is picturecorrect.com. This is probably right behind Digital Photography School as far as traffic is concerned. 
Uh, again, it's very similar. All types of how-to articles on anything and everything concerning photography. Any type of photography you could think of, even if you're just beginning and you didn't even take your camera out of its box yet, these two websites should help you out. Now, if you're looking for a book on photography and you're just beginning, um, I would suggest How to Create Stunning Digital Photography by Tony and Chelsea Northrup. They have, of course, a huge YouTube following too. You could visit them on YouTube. Um, the book is great. I think it's probably the best uh, beginner to intermediate photography book there is. Um, they cover just about everything you could want to know about how to create stunning digital photography. Now, um, I'm showing, of course, Amazon here. And again, I am an Amazon affiliate, but you could just go to Amazon and just search for how to create stunning digital photography. Um, the paperback you could see is $19.98. The Kindle version is $9.98. Um, again, I, I think the book is awesome. Uh, check it out. I think this, if, especially if you're a beginner and you don't have to read it from beginning to end, you could jump around. He has it set up in great, uh, in a great way that if you're just interested in doing night photography, let's say, or something like that, you could jump to a specific section and read about it. So check out Tony and Chelsea Northrup's book, How to Create Stunning Digital Photography. Now, if you're interested in gear, if you're uh, kind of a gearhead like me, uh, the, it's kind of maligned a little bit, DxO Mark, because a lot of times they'll give a camera or a lens a bad rating and then everyone kind of gets up and roar over it because we all love our equipment. So especially, you know, if you're, you know, a Nikon shooter and they give a Nikon camera a bad grade, you're going to get upset. But it's really a pretty good site. They go and they test the equipment. Um, think of kind of like Consumer Reports where they'll test the equipment very thoroughly and they give it... Um, kind of a proprietary rating system that you could, you have to kind of learn about like what's these scores mean a hundred, you know, the Sony a seven R three has a sensor rating of 100. And so does the Nikon and the Pentax and the Hasselblad. Well, what does that mean? Well, um, you know, you'd have to go through the site and explain, it explains how they get their rating and what they do. But if you're ever interested in a, um, you know, a lens or a camera, Definitely uh, stop at dxomark.com and see if they uh, did anything on that camera or lens already. And I think you'll be happy, um, you know, reading about and seeing what is good about the camera, what is bad about the camera in a more objective way, at least as objective as possible. It's difficult to leave your personal feelings and biases out of something, but they do a pretty decent job of uh, just breaking it down to uh, more of a quantitative analysis um, than an opinion. So that's my recommendation if you're interested in specific types of gear you want to purchase. Now, if you're really interested in a spe specific type of photography, um, the first two um, websites I talked about, Digital Photography School and Picture Correct, will have a ton of articles on all different types of photography, especially the more common types of photography, like um, like uh, landscape photography, let's say, even maybe portrait photography. They'll have a lot of articles there on that. But if you want to get some more in-depth than that, there's a few other resources I could recommend. First, uh, magazine if you're really interested in studio photography and even like lifestyle photography, which would be more existing light photography, I would recommend Good Light Magazine. It is not a print publication. It's only available on PDF or through an app, uh, your iPhone or, um, you know, uh, Google apps, you know, for, uh, for a <laughs> drawing a blank. But anyway, if you click over here, I could get help. Here we go. Uh, Android, I'm sorry. Drew a blank on Android. So you have um, iOS app, app, an Android app, and a PDF version version of uh, Good Light Magazine. I think it's very, very good. Um, it has uh, all different types of uh, photography that would 
again have to do with something in the in the studio and or a little bit of existing light a little bit more geared toward the studio they'll show all the different lighting setups so if you're wondering how to set up lights and things like that this magazine will help you now one thing it some of the issues are not suitable for work so just um remember that because you know even like this one here says the best boudoir lens um there might be a picture or two in there that might not be suitable for work so uh it is a really really well done magazine though and and i think if you're really interested in studio photography and again type of an existing light portrait portraiture this magazine will help you a lot now as far as i think it's like 12 bucks a year so something like that. And it's a monthly magazine. So it's pretty reasonable. More reasonable than, than some of the other ones I'm going to be talking about in a minute. Now, if you're really into street photography, there's a few different street photography magazines out there. But I really think the best is Inspired Eye. Inspired Eye is an excellent, excellent magazine and website. Uh, there's a lot of articles here on different, you know, 28 millimeter tips for beginners. Confessions of an ex-gear addict street photography tips for beginners um and so on i mean all these different articles and again the magazine is a monthly magazine and it's a pdf magazine so once a month uh you'll get an email telling you that the pdf is ready for download you could download it read it on your computer or get it into a reading app that's on your phone or tablet um, i usually use um ibooks to read it in on my um, phone and or on my iPad. So, um, excellent magazine. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't remember how much this is. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Magazine subscription. Let's see how much this is. I don't think it's too much. Subscribe for a dollar, it says. So, I don't know what all that means. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's $1 for seven days and then it's $20 every six months. So that's, uh, six issues basically for, uh, 20 bucks. So that's, that's, uh, very reasonable. So Inspired Eye Magazine, if you're into street photography or even documentary photography, um, that's, you know, a little more, not necessarily street shots, I would say definitely look into Inspired Eye. Now, if you're really into art, fine art uh this next magazine is super expensive um but it's probably like the premier fine art photography magazine there is it's called aperture magazine uh they only um print four um issues a year for the you know fall winter spring and summer and the they're really big they're almost like a book um they really are very, very, very thick, heavy stock. And they better be because they're pretty expensive. Um, they have varying subscription rates. It depends whether you want the print only version or the print and digital version or the digital and the back issue version. Uh, that ranges from the cheapest, which I think is the digital and back issue vi version, is 60 bucks for four issues, basically, and all the back issues. And they're all digital. Or if you want print and digital and all the back issues, it's $110. Now, I'm going to warn you, this magazine isn't for everyone. Like this magazine will have stuff in there that you're going to wonder why, <laughs> you know, why. Um, you know, I don't know, like a guy did a study of piles of dog poop that it were found around LA. I mean, he took pictures of, I mean, stuff like that. Some people somewhere consider fine art. So a lot of it is really kind of odd. But if you really want to get into fine art photography and you want to promote your work as fine art work, maybe get a showing in a museum, something like that, this magazine you probably should get so you could understand where the current fine art market is. Um, it, I don't know. It, like I said, the quality of the magazine is great. It's a huge magazine super heavy uh pages but some of the content you're gonna be scratching your head um i guarantee it so but again it is the premier fine art magazine i think available today probably for several years it's been around for a long time 
Uh, so you really have to get it if you really want to get into fine art photography. Now, if you're interested in black and white photography, and again, those first two websites, again, have a lot of this, but not, they probably don't have a lot on the current fine art market. And they probably, but they do probably have a lot of black and white um, stuff. But probably the premier black and white magazine, in my opinion, is Black and White Magazine. And this isn't that cheap either. They, it's a bi-monthly magazine, meaning every two months there's an issue. So six a year and it runs $35. And it's good though. And if you want to know like a lot of different black and white um you know, ideas and inspiration. Uh, this is the magazine for you. They have a lot of uh, contests too. So uh, might be something you're interested in getting into. Now, one thing I should add, the first two websites, um, Tony and Chelsea's book, are like how-to photography websites and a how-to photography book. Uh, the the uh, DxO mark is basically a camera website and lens gear website. Then when you start getting to this um, Good Light magazine, it's a how-to, again, magazine for uh, portrait photography mainly. Inspired Eyes, a how-to magazine for street and documentary photography. Aperture magazine isn't really a how-to magazine. It's more of a, this is art here it is. <laughs> and um, you kind of got to get the idea. Black and white magazine is kind of in between. A lot of it is here's some great black and white imagery and it's a little bit how to here and there. So, you know, if you're really a beginner and you get Aperture magazine, you're not going to find really a lot of, you're not going to find how to articles in there, how to do this or how to do that. It's not going to be like that. Um, black and white ma magazine might disappoint you as well. So I just kind of wanted to warn you ahead of time. Now the next magazine really has no how-to articles, but it's probably my favorite magazine. Um, it is called Photo District News, PDN for short. I have mentioned it in the past. Uh, if you're anything we already talked about, um, beside maybe a beginner, like if you're a fine art photographer or a fine or you want to get into fine art photography or you really want to get into exhibition black and white photography or you want to get into different photography disciplines um, like photojournalism editorial photography ed advertising photography a photo district New news is an excellent magazine it doesn't really have how-to articles meaning like uh, you know, how to take a portrait of, you know, a famous person with light lighting setups. It doesn't do that, but it will tell you what editors are looking for. Um, you know, Time Magazine editors interviewed here and there, you know, what they're looking for, for their type of editorial images. Um, they each, ep or each, it's a monthly magazine and each issue is usually themed. So one theme will be about uh, fine art photography. Another might be about portrait photography. Another one might be about editorial photography. Another one might be about advertising photography. And the whole issue, and it's a pretty, pretty large magazine, it's, it's all geared towards that specific topic. So on the you know, fine art issue, they'll talk about um, I, how you could get your your um, photography seen by museums and maybe get a museum showing um, how to print your your um, your uh, images for fine art things like that so it's going to be very specific for that specific issue but I found it's a great help uh, for uh, maybe the advanced photographer that wants to really break into a specific market like again you know editorial advertising, uh, fashion, whatever, uh, check it out. I think photo district news is a really, really good magazine. And again, I mentioned it's my favorite, but it's not cheap either. Uh, 12 issues. If you want the digital only version is $45. And I'm going to tell you right now, their iOS app stinks. I don't think it's very good. I don't know about their Android app. 
but their iOS app isn't very good. Um, you can get the PDF of it, I guess, and read it on your computer. I don't like reading things on my computer, though. I prefer to read. I mean, I don't like reading on my phone either, but if I had to choose my phone or my computer, I'd choose my phone. I prefer reading it on my iPad. So that's where I try to read this stuff. Um, the print version is $65, and it doesn't say it on the website, but you also get the back issues of the magazine in the digital format. So if you pay the 65 bucks for the print version in at least the iOS app, you're able to uh, download and read all the back issues digitally. So uh, Photo District News, again, I think it's a, it's a really, really good magazine. Um, now, Photo Dis the company that puts out Photo District News puts out three other magazines as well. And I'm only familiar with one of the three. Uh, one is called Rangefinder. And did I? I don't think I opened that. Here, we'll go. We'll click on this. Rangefinder, I think, is again for a professional. Uh, wedding and portrait, stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure how much this is. You click on subscribe and it brings you to a form to fill out, which I didn't want to fill out. So Rangefinder Magazine is another um, issue. Again, I don't know how good that is. I never even uh, have seen an issue of that. They also have this one called Emerging Photographer. And um, it says the Photographer Digital Edition is free. So you just got to sign up for it. Uh, so you could get the digital of edition of Emerging Photographer. Now, I've never seen this one either, but I am actually going to sign up for that and check this out someday. But again, I, you know, I don't know what it's about. Uh, again, Emerging Photographer, obviously, it's for a beginner. Not a beginner, but somebody who's breaking into, I think, either a professional photography realm or a fine art type photography realm, something like that. Now, the one I am familiar with and I read all the time is um, PDN-EDU, and it's free. Um, now, the print version isn't free unless you're an educator. So if you go over here, you can see subscribe for free, and the print edition has a little asterisk, and it says educators only, free copies to use in your classroom. But the digital edition is free for everyone. Now, I don't know about the Android app, but the iOS app, if you go to the... Um, the app store and you search for PDN EDU, you could get the iOS app and you could download all the issues for free. It's a quarterly magazine. So they only have four issues a year, but they're really good. And it's very similar to photo district news, the actual PDN magazine. So if you're hesitant about spending the $65 for the print edition of Photo District News, or even the $45 for the digital only edition of Photo District News, I would suggest you get the app and download the PDN EDU app. Yeah, and then um, look at that. And I, the, it's very similar to um, Photo District News. So check it out. And again, these are themed as well. So they'll have like sports photography issue, a uh, fine art photography issue, and uh, different, different disciplines in photography. So I, I like this one too, and I read, it, I read them all the time. So that's an excellent one. Now, beyond these magazines, the one book I talked about and the two websites I talked about, if you're a professional or you're going to be a professional, you may want to consider joining a professional organization. The benefits between them will vary, but I think usually it's a valuable thing and something that you should consider doing. There is some educational opportunities as well when you join one of these professional organizations. Now, I have this website, um, Dugal Visual Solutions. I just Googled and I found this. And they talk about five U.S. photography organizations worth joining. Uh, now, I, I belong to two of them. The first one, I do not. American Photograph... Phot I'm sorry. American Photographic Artists, APA. Headquartered in Los Angeles with chapters across the country, APA is dedicated to promoting photographers and protecting their rights. The organization was previously called Advertising Photographers of America, but changed names to better describe its multifaceted member base. 
APA offers an extensive benefits package with discounts on professional and financial services, web tools, and even Apple products. So there's a link. I'll have a link in the show notes again to this website, and you could link through to these websites and check them out and see if they offer something that would benefit you. Now, I do belong to the Professional Photographers of America. Uh, they call it PPA. PPA is great for studio and portrait photographers looking to expand their knowledge base while taking advantage of Boku business resources. The organization was started back in 1869 and now has more than 27,000 members. PPA offers tons of educational resources, seminars, and vital business protection, savings, and annual imaging USA convention. So there is a huge convention that PPA has with a lot of keynote speakers or a couple of keynote speakers, a lot of classes, uh, how-to, you know, how-to stuff. They also, um, this is, you know, where my, you know, because I'm a member, but if you come here, you could see a lot of their resources. They have insurance, copyright information, contracts, sample contracts you could use, um, savings on various equipment, including they mentioned Apple products. Uh, not a lot, though, on Apple at least. Business resources, things that will help your business, sales and marketing tools, articles. Um, and they do have a magazine. It's a monthly magazine, if I remember right. Um, and it's all, you know, the business of photography. So if you're interested in that. Now, one thing I'm going to just tell you, one resource they have, which I think is great, and one resource I have, they have that a lot of people join for that I think you might be disappointed in. The first one is that is great. They just have a bulletin board. It's called The Loop. And it's been my experience that on the internet, a lot of bulletin boards, they're, they're not very friendly. Meaning, uh, especially a new person comes in and asks a question. Sometimes there's just like people on there are just mean, you know. The Loop, though... There's a ton of photographers, ton of professional photographers, ton of really talented professional photographers that will answer questions and they're very helpful and they're not condescending. And um, I think it's really a very, very uh, strong feature of the PPA membership. So that is there and they'll answer all kinds of photography questions from the business side of photography. Like you have a trouble client, you know, a problem client, or you have, you know, a question about how to set up lighting for, you know, for, for proms, something like that. They, they were very helpful. Now, the one thing a lot of people join for though, is their equipment insurance. And in my view, and this is purely my opinion, I don't think it's that great. Um, the main thing is you know, you're, you're joining and you're thinking you're, you got, I don't know, I forgot the amount. I'm not going to say a number, but they give you a certain amount of insurance and it's a pretty big amount. You think it's, oh, it's going to cover all my cameras and lenses. Well, the problem is that there's a fairly large deductible of $250 and there's a first time claim fee of $250 and there's depreciation. If your equipment is brand new, brand new. There's no depreciation, but then it's 25% a year up to 80%. So if you have a five-year-old camera and that five-year-old camera costs you, you know, I don't know, $5,000 and someone steals it or you drop it in a lake or something like that, you're only going to get 80% of that less your $250 deductible, less if it's your first time claim, another $250. So you might not really get anything. So, uh, you know, a lot of, I know a lot of photographers, they have these really old lenses that are like worth thousands because they're not, you know, these old, you know, Leica lenses or something that are not found anywhere anymore. And they're selling for like $20,000 on eBay, but brand new, they probably sold for a thousand or $2,000. Well, with the depreciation and the deductible, that's not really insured anymore. So, you know, the insurance, eh, they, they do have it. I mean, that comes with your membership. So, I mean, it's not like you're, you know, I don't know, like you're, uh, I guess, I, I don't know what to say it's free because you are paying for the membership. They do have like other types of insurance for businesses that you would pay for. They have drone insurance also. 
Um, I don't have any of that. I have a policy on my own for my studio, an umbrella policy, a business policy, not through PPA that covers my equipment, covers my studio, covers if someone comes into my studio and falls and hurts themselves, or if I'm out shooting somewhere and I break something in someone's home, I'm covered. Or if I get my camera stolen out of my car, which I never leave it in the car, but if I've got my camera stolen or if I drop it in a lake, I'm covered because of the insurance I have uh, separately. So I just wanted to talk about the, the, a lot of people do join because of the insurance. Then they're really disappointed because of the insurance. But there's a lot of other stuff. They have really a lot of um, different um, training seminars and things like that that you could register for. And um, they also have, if I remember right, the, um, I don't know where it is. They actually have, um, I think, videos. I just don't know where they are because I don't personally watch them. But they have how-to videos. Yeah, here's like John Gress, Best Portrait Lighting Techniques. Stuff like that. So they have really cool stuff. I mean, I, I like it. I think PPA is worth it overall. Um, and, you know, I think it. Um, if you're a professional, you may want to consider it because it does help you. You know, you put that in your credentials that you're a, a member of PPA. Now, let's go back here. Uh, American Society of Media Professionals. I do not belong to this. This is ASMP is one of the leading trade organizations promoting the art and business of photography. With 39 chapters throughout the U.S., there's a good chance ASMP has a presence somewhere near your home base. Members receive a free guide to running a photography business, followed by access to a database of qualified photographer assistants, along with a plethora of discounts ranging from travel and insurance to software, do-it-yourself web design templates, and marketing resources. Again, that's the American Society of Media Professionals. I do not belong to them. This other one I do not belong to either. It's called the American Photography Association. The American Photography Association welcomes photographers of all skill levels and genres with a growing list of exposure opportunities, including a member portfolio page, complimentary access to calls for entries, and the possibility of being featured in the organization's social media and marketing content. That is the American Photography Association. Now, the next one I do belong to, it's called the National Press Photographers Association, uh, more commonly called the NPPA. The photojournalist will want to join the NPPA, home to many of the country's top press photographers. The digital age has brought about a wave of challenges regarding copyrights and media ethics. NPPA is your all-in-one resource for navigating those choppy waters. Um, it says awesome benefits included. I'm not really sure what benefits they might have. They have a magazine like PPA. There's a magazine. I think it's pretty sure it's monthly. Um, this was the last issue. This lady was on the cover. Um, I think she works for us. She editor for Time, I think, if I remember right. Or it's, a, it's every two months, this magazine. So six, six uh, this magazine. I get so many magazines sometimes it's hard for me to remember which come when. I think this is uh, every two months. So um, six issues a year. Uh, the main thing is with NPPA, um, it's kind of get your foot in the door sometimes. Uh, mainly it's the photo ID. Um, you get this, you don't get this with your membership though. This costs $20 extra and you, you get this, um, this, it's on a lanyard to wear around your neck and you're a member of the NPPA, uh, uh, benefits. Um, when you travel to a lot of times you'll have to pay, uh, baggage fees. But if you're a member of a press organization, the, airline will waive the baggage fee and you need this to show that you're a member of the organization. Um, so that mainly a lot of people get it for because of this, that costs $20 extra. They also have competitions, as you can see here. Um, they have training, uh, different workshops they offer. Um, so tell you the truth, I don't take advantage of my NPPA membership. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm a member because I want to um, show that I adhere to NPPA member ethics and I got the photo ID that helps. So that's why I chose to join NPPA and I really don't take advantage of a lot of the different um, 
things that uh, they offer their members. But what I strongly suggest you do, if you're interested, go to this website, check out these five photography organizations, see which one works for you, and see um, how much the memberships are. They're not cheap, um, so just to let you know. But check it out. Again, I hope this helps uh, you as a photographer wherever you are in your photography junior journey, whether you're a beginner, whether you're intermediate, whether you're just starting to specialize, get into street photography or get into black and white photography or, or studio portraiture, um, or if you're a professional and you're looking for professional organizations, I hope this helps. Thank you for watching my podcast for the joy of photography. Remember, stop by my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find all my latest videos and articles to help you improve your photography. That's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.